uh, girls, especially uh, our girl students as well as boys, at least they should come up because the IIC should flourish and National College of Pharmacy IIC should can be flourished again only when the students they come up with ideas, they start incubating their ideas, uh, uh, then start up with a IIC that is startup uh, policies, and slowly they should be a, a good self entrepreneur. This is our motto, and I hope all these uh, lecture will have a good, a good impact on this. And I uh, thank all the organizing committee for inviting me for this uh, occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I introduce our chief guest. Today we have an eminent personality as a resource person, Dr. Nisha Mukun. Dr. Nisha has more than 15 years of experience in technology and product development. She, uh, she is passionate towards entrepreneurship and translation of lab science to market product that addresses social problems. She had various portfolio portfolios for supporting emerging as well as growth startups. Currently, she is working with the Crescent Innovation Incubation Council with a vision to make CIIC one of the globally recognized university-based technological business incubator, TPI, of excellence. She is a technical mentor to CIIC startups and also supports in fundraising and international go-to-market strategy. She is well connected with the startup ecosystem in India and with various stakeholders, including TPIs, government, AngelWorks, uh, VCs, Accelerator, Seed Funds, etc. In CIIC, she is an integral uh, member in various schemes under BIRAC DST, GITA DST, Startup India, MEITY, EDII, Tamil Nadu, etc. Previously, she was a uh, senior scientist in Golden Jubilee Biotech Park for Women. It is the first of the uh, is kind of uh, exclusively for women in a uh, life science supporting in the entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey. Before registering for PhD, she worked in uh, industry industrial sector with stre strengthening her technical expert expertise in industrial biotechnology. Dr. Nisha was the principal investigation for her doctor research fund research funded by DSP, GOL. Uh, Dr. Nisha's area of expertise in bioprocess process technology and molecular biology, especially metabolic engineering of bac bacteria. Now, Dr. Uh, Nisha Mukut is head of the life science uh, vertical and startup in investment and acceleration, present innovation incubation council, Bandalu, Tamil Nadu. Uh, I will welcome you, ma'am, for sharing some uh, words with us. So good morning, everyone. All the faculties from National College of Pharmacy, students, and of course, other participants. So it is actually a privilege to come and talk over here. As Vadma sir was telling, maybe a couple of months back, we met. So at that time, I remember when they came and they were like interested to know more about entrepreneurship, how incubation uh, centers work. But seeing back, maybe fast forwarding like another six or seven months, I, it is really overwhelming to know the kind of activities under IIC are doing because that IIC policy on the their objective was like inculcate more of entrepreneurship into the students, student ecosystem, converting them as startups and today's startups, obviously today's students are tomorrow startups and employer uh, employees. We could say. So it's really overwhelming and uh, for me, very close to me because uh, being a life science and from a uh, uh, college which is more of dominant in life science, they are doing such activities, very overwhelming. So I congratulate to the whole team over here and keep going. So any support from uh, Chennai side, any support from CIC, we are always there. 
So with this mark, let me start my uh, talk. Uh, so is my screen uh, visible for everyone? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So for the timing, I'll just close my video just to uh, be in the bandwidth. So uh, before I go on into the talk, I want to do, uh, I just pulled up this quote from uh, social media. This has been circulating in most of the social media, including the Facebook. Uh, I felt this was very re uh, relevant in picking up for this topic. So this quotation is from Sir William Golding. What he said was, I think women are foolish to pretend they are equal to men. They are far superior and always have been. Whatever you give a woman, she'll make it greater. If you give her a sperm, she'll give you a baby. If you give her a house, she'll give you a home. If you give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she'll give you a heart. She multiplies and enlarges what is given to her. To his quotation, I would like to add, given an opportunity, she will raise an enterprise. So to this, I just... I just introduce everyone to my talk, uh, why women founders succeed as entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurship and women, it's been a long, maybe it's been a talk everywhere. Most of the people say women entrepreneurs, women empowerment, women have to have their rights. So at this point and where I felt where life science being a woman dominated sector, then it was then we, me and uh, myself and Kadir Vailsal, we thought then why don't we talk about women entrepreneurship? So coming on to the topic. So when you see this image, this is just three eras I could say. The Stone Age era, the Industrial Revolution, then the current era of Industry 4.0, and, and nowadays people say Industry 5.0. So this is a, a, a progressive uh, of human uh, societal nature. So it, it's a biased thought. Everyone says. So I'm seeing this image itself, what we say, till the late uh, 50s, women are always, you know, uh, she had to take care of the kids. She was within the four walls. She she was she was never empowered. She never had right to study. She never had right to vote. So so many things that women do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts were there. But let's keep that thought aside and let's see what actually happened. Why women had to be within the four walls? So seeing taking from the first sector that is uh, the first era that is the Stone Age. So when you imagine both women and men would have gone equally out for hunting, equally protecting themselves from the harsh environment. So they should have, because they, it was very barbaric at that time. So there was no woman-man concept. It is survival. It's only mere survival. Then as Darwin's theory says, survival of the fittest, definitely the next generations had to come in. So when the next generation came in, definitely that era they would have identified. A woman is not taking rest or if she is not giving herself some time, she is losing her life or she is losing the next generation. So they would have consciously decided, let the woman be at home and the men go out for uh, hunting. But at that time, was she just taking care of the kids? No. At that time, it's if the entrepreneurial skill started, I could say. She started multitasking where she has to take care of the kids. She has to take care of the home. She had to cook. And obviously, wild animals will be coming. She had to hunt over there itself. And the hunting, even the husbands who go out will not be coming in a day or two. So she has to be in a progressive thought that when a husband comes, everything should be prepared at home. So the multi-talented thought itself, it started over there. But where, why did woman allow herself to be in the four walls? So as you see, as you come to the industrial revolution, if you see the image, the women enjoyed being within the four walls. She enjoyed the learning, the art of cooking, the learning, the art of stitching, you know, uh, socializing, community started being built up. Community in the sense, if you see in our uh, Indian ecosystem, you could say the religious ceremonies were there, where women come together, they cook together, they pray together, they decide, they took an owners over there. Maybe the religious was a sector they could take, you know, a lead something rather than any other businesses. So over there also, women had shown leadership, but she took 
very very consciously she tried to be ignorant because of the ignorance the male dominating society was said to be inside the home you don't come out you don't need to study you don't need to improvise your condition you don't need to be so likewise one day male dominating society started being so it was never that woman was being subsided but she chosen to be ignored and because of the evolutionary habit when i saw my mom who was a homemaker my mom would have seen her grandmother being home so everyone by consciously a guy a girl okay after certain period we have to be at home we have to be so the confidence to come out you know break the shackles and come out she was losing it it was only because of the evolutionary habit so it was nothing to do with woman or man so there is no physical but what happened to to tag that uh, weakness of women people said okay that uh, the before early uh, early uh, 50s people it was more of physical oriented society was there so women male dominated but now technology wise women is finding it more as she is coming out so women is more active over here so it's no way to be uh is no way to be physical it's no way to be the brain or bronze it's only the choice that woman took she uh, there was a certain era where she was ignorant and she was less confident but now she is more confident she is more aware of what is happening to her and now she is more determined to come out so this is the transitional change we could see so so this is one kind of example where i want to take this was a case study uh, last year jaswanti ben so she uh, received padma shri till last year i never knew about her so oh, she was is... uh, yes okay so till last year uh, even i didn't knew about her so when i read about her it was really fascinating so what it was so you know after our independence india was struggling to you know struggling on a foot to come back when the britishers left we had to have our own constitution we were building our economy we were building up our societies our states were building up so it is at that time you remember it was 1959 at that time when there was no literacy so the literacy rate of women was just 8% 8% so this 8% means they only knew how to read and write they didn't have a degree they didn't have the luxury for a degree they didn't have studies they couldn't come out you know that that transition period post independence so it is at that time seven ladies they came together the only skill and knowledge was to make papad so most of you will be aware of this lichard part when you come to north it's only lichard papad but nowadays in south india also most of the stores you will get lichard papad so these seven ladies came together They, they they were inside the house and their strength was making this paper then they thought okay our skills why don't we give it out or why don't we share it to our women so they started with just 80 rupees and uh, that company the uh, organization name is like sri mahila graha udyog richard paper so this udyog what they did with just 80 rupees now today it is standing with 1600 crore and over 67 branches are there it supplies to 25 countries and 4.8 billion pub yes maybe if you see 65 years back company making such a turnover is not big deal but remember the seven ladies were illiterate and their only motive was to help each other so there was nothing else they they never had any profit based uh, you know uh, uh, outlook when they started this company so over here they never had employers or employees they always called themselves as lichard bains or when you say it in english a lichard sisters so seven employers they became 75 i'm sorry 45000 uh, lichard sisters this is like for the women by the women so over there why how they were successful in spite they didn't have a degree in spite they didn't know the knowledge of running a business at that time they brought in the concept of culti ownership now this collective ownership is something that starbucks and apple mainly depends on so remember starbucks 
brought this collective ownership because of the senior management who passed out with luxurious degrees from the very huge or uh, very well established management uh, institutes but these seven ladies they didn't do what they did every sister who came into the organization they gave a stake to them so they made every employee from the bottom of the pyramid till the top of the pyramid to give the owners so if it's their owners one if is the feeling of feeling oneness it is my own company they will work for it so that is what the collective ownership started 65 years back and they didn't have very elaborate offices or they didn't have very business motive like starting an mnc building up a big uh, high fi building nothing what the concept is every woman who is sitting at home who knew the art of making richard papad come join us make papad and then sell it out so the the profit they made they reinvested back into the company and the profit was shared within the branches same by loss if the loss was made it was then again shared by all so there was there was there there was no love loss over there everyone shared equally the happiness and the sadness over there so there is another story i would want to bring over here when apple was uh, moving very fast but it was rising uh, the ladder of success in between steve jobs have to leave the company so when he left the company uh, within couple of years they started dipping the uh, apple was going into bankruptcy so when they were going into bankruptcy uh, uh, everyone panicked over because in the cap apple was in the top level and within couple of years just because steve jobs left so then after years he came back within two years apple was back into the stock exchange why was that so he never changed the team he never changed the engineers none within two years he was able to bring it back so at that time what he said was like the core the vision and mission of the company so the, what happened when he left the team members and engineers started competing with all the dickan tom dickan harry in the town they started building it app lost its credit, credibility over there but when steve jobs came we don't need to do it we only sell class we only sell class products to elites so that is how the ipod ipad different concepts came into then it was only maybe at certain time it was apple was only for the elite people so he brought in system he he brought in a value system over there what is thing different so if you see apple product cannot be replicated by anyone else their products was well well protected so that is how steve job run run uh, run the whole company over there similarly over here the sisters over here they had a core philosophy sarva daya progress for all so they always meant whoever comes into the company they should progress it's not monetary wise monetary is one part of it but her she her family her community her her value system they gave dignity to a woman maybe you, you can remember 65 years back or 70 years when independence where women was con un considered untouchable or underprivileged they gave a value to women so today 45000 women is feeling empowered so this is this storyline i wanted to bring over here is like they never had any degree over there they didn't have any business degree they didn't have any knowledge but they came they survived and they are still surviving and they are still progressing so coming to women entrepreneurs so why do women entrepreneurs succeed so just to make it a simple let's call it b b don't un unnecessary risk we we don't take it if you see for in the case of richard papad sisters they didn't go about building multinational buildings as i mentioned before whatever they had with the limited source they started doing the business they are not afraid to ask assistance okay if i don't know they didn't have degree there is no max they would have definitely they would have asked his spouse that they would have gone out they would have asked some kind of support so that is a they don't hesitate women doesn't hesitate to have an ego going out and getting an assistant women we want to we we want everyone to feel included and engaged they take it together over here they want it progressive they want every single woman who come into the community to be progressive we do more with less very everyone knows at your home also when your mom when your grocery is out you know how your mom very beautifully handles the household then we are more determined and ambitious than men 
maybe this is very too uh, cliche i could say uh, i'm not saying ambitious but why the statement a woman is more ambitious says that woman has a very long term that is what the next statement is a very long term maybe men are very fast in taking risk but women don't do that they do a very good risk assessment once and feel they feel confident then only they'll take a next step we define success differently in the case of lichard papert it was never the money oriented they were only progressive for women so there is always the woman has always had a different thought process so maybe it's a societal reason or maybe it's a fam her personal value reason or some reason is there when she for her to define success and firm creates more jobs than a male owned peers and then finally actually women entrepreneurs are much happier because she's more content all these whatever lines if you see again back to the lichard sisters why are they happier very small they within their own you know closed uh confined region they are finding success that is enough for them they are not seeing even though they have built a multinational company equivalent multinational they have not seen they are not you know they they never went out for branding they never went off you know like other corporate companies we are the best so this is where you always feel happiness in even a small gesture what women do so now coming back to empowerment so where the empowerment stands if you say a woman has the inbuilt she has the quality but she never tried to bring it out for instance she always chose to be ignorant she chose to be less confident so where does the empowerment come that is where promoting yourself your work you know you are a good singer but you always tend to you know bath in the bath i'm missing in the bathroom you know you are a good dancer but you don't come out you know your value but you hesitate to do it or you are not confident to do it ability to determine their own choices you want to go for medical but your parents are telling you to go for engineering you want to go be a chef but again your parents so you have your own choices but because of the environmental peer pressure you are not able to do it the right to influence the social change for themselves and others this is what the lichard sisters did they they knew what was happening in the society there was a underprivileged sector called women they wanted to do something for women so this is called empowerment now coming to the college student so any student irrespective of male or female if you think this these are the constant statement which comes running in your mind i'm not good enough i'm not pretty i'm not smart you always have this comparative statement running in your mind with your peer why does this always happen to you Oh, why do you need to think like this? If you know you're good enough, go present it. If you know you're smart enough, why do you need to hesitate? So there are certain factors that pull you down. So that is what I want to discuss over here. So what is the root cause for that? Maybe as I said, as we generation wise, we are from the Stone Age to the industrial people. Industrial, industrial ladies, sorry, they confined to their four walls. Though they knew many of the art, many of the talent. so there was one root cause what they stopped as i mentioned the confidence so now there was a study done over this uh, why women hesitate to bring out confidence so that's the study is called cliff effect and run by rita david and her uh, uh, organization is innovation girls you all can go and just read about her so what she says is like once a girl hits the adolescence she loses her confidence dramatically by 26% and what she lost she never able to return it back however successful she is in her life so just imagine when you were 5 years old or 6 years old you used to run out you used, used to take the cycle you used to fight with your brother or dad you used to climb the trees but at that same nisha now if i see about now in this situation can i no i'll hesitate though my mind is willing to do the same thing i cannot i hesitate so somewhere that confidence which i had 20 years back 30 years back it is not there so this is scientifically it is proven that girls lose it as they reach their puberty so in that they are telling how the confidence level they were measured they are saying as the girls reach by the age of 8 their confidence level drop by 30% so from if you see up as a parent as a sister or brother if you see your siblings right you can see the difference so it's a more, it's nothing but a psychological change that is happening to a girl and from a teen out of four in teenage kids three of them always worry about failing so that is again the 
so can i do this project very well will i fail if i fail what will others think about me so there are hell number of question that runs in the mind no right. what happens if i fail okay i'll fail that's it what if i go for the competition i may win i may not win let's take it that confidence of pushing yourself to do it you don't need anyone else you cannot push yourself so that is what it happens in it range then the other sector is you are not allowed to fail definitely the peer pressure from your environment from your parents from your teachers from your friends itself that confidence to fail okay if i fail what happens that is this peer pressure but all these peer pressure are not there in the male so that is why the males are more uh, active in taking risk they don't mind taking risk they don't mind failing and the last category is people pleasing if you see that 46% of the girls loses their confidence because they want to please others you like to cut your hair but your parents say grow your hair you want to please your parents you grow your hair you like writing with black pen but your college says you write it in blue pen so you know these are small small things which later on becomes a big thing in your life so you always tend to please others you tend to lose your confidence you tend to forget what you are you tend to be in that ignorant world you don't want to come out of it so this is what happens to a woman so there is no change from the stone age till now there is no change it is only your psychological upbringing has made you be like this so how to build your confidence that is it's what similarly everyone says when you find an opportunity don't lose it it's okay you fail but you have tried it positive self talk don't depend for others to say okay nisha you did it good it is a wonderful you have your own fault okay i did a talk today i did it good okay i made some mistake it's okay but i could do something that positive talk give it to yourself you are the only best motivator for yourself praise efforts instead of outcomes as i said 99% pers perspiration and 1% inspiration praise yourself you did an effort freedom and guidance and self improve always keep improvising yourself and learn start learning new things start learning new ideas this is until unless you do again you become an ignorant you know that four wall lady as some of the tips i'll make it very fast most of you know it first is know your stuff don't go about you know when your teacher asks yeah, do you know it accept the truth what you know what you don't know if you know it stand up and say that yes i know it i can do it this is my area this is what i want to do be that good start with small things and then go for the higher goals like for the olympic athletes they are trained to do small wins and slowly their confidence is built finally they are taking so small small wins try to do that don't try to aim you know directly go for the neat exam or directly you get for the entrance exam start with the small small exams that is happening in your town if you can win it that is your goal try you know within your community start winning it if you are able to win that is your goal if not then you are under peer pressure to get that goal dress the part you you like dressing in salva but your peers are there who comes in jeans and you know the uh, western culture you you are having a peer because of the peer you start imitating like that but your confidence inside you now my this part is seen whether the pants suits me what will that person you are trying to please somebody else your full time your thought is on so what if you dress of uh, indianized okay so what your dress is so why do you need to worry about it if you are confident this is what be yourself and go don't don't think about the other people how they are this is how you are you are like this take care of your body and health female always tend to be a, this is the one of the biggest weakness of a female she always she forgets to take maybe till your marriage you are conscious about but once you marriage once you become a mother this is what a lady is you can see a mom so they are unaware of what is happening their health is getting deteriorated they, because of that they lose confidence they tend to be a you know household person okay i'll be at home i don't want to so until unless your body and your mind is healthy you cannot be confident spend more time with other confident women somebody comes oh it's okay it's okay this is what girls are made for it's okay you don't need to do that that's not the confident talk it's okay you failed but try again failing once is not disha go try again one more it's okay you fail again that is a confident identify those kind of women those kind of con it can be a mother it can be a mother like people it can be a sister it can be a friends also but people where you who talk encourages you talk to them more 
and finally the art of saying no say yes but also say no to say no when it doesn't work for you this happens to all the ladies even it happens to me so when my dad said to take some i i never wanted to come into biotech side i wanted to come into the mba side i never had the confidence to tell him no but today after being married when i am given the opportunity to come so my husband has given me that confidence okay nisha whatever it is you say no or yes so that is kind of the people the kind of people i am surrounded with has encouraged me to take up job to come out be confident so that is what you should do so i know there are peer pressures like certain elders are there where you cannot but at least leaving your environment your close environment when it comes to college when you are outside when you are working if you feel there is a situation to say no you always have to say that never ever be a people pleaser so then what is an empowered woman so i i'm just pulling up all the points if your health is empowered you are empowered same wise economic definitely your uh, economic and gender advocacy which i still i'm still uh, confused for that because we are never lesser than any male we are ignorant but we were ignorant to or to identify our skill so once all these are there a woman is called herself as empowered so i don't know first who all notice it so my title was why women founder succeed as entrepreneurs i have written a second line saying empowerment through startup so how the women and startup is going to be linked i'll be telling you this is a statistics of the world around how female uh, are engaged in the entrepreneurial activity if you see india india sandwich between germany and italy it's a good thing because we know italy and germany both are technology driven companies but india if you see we are 2.6 and we are necessity driven entrepreneurship which is not a bad thing so we know that in society if there's a necessity if in our community there's a necessity if as a woman if i feel there's a necessity we are being provoked so that's a good thing about india so all most of our women entrepreneurs are necessity driven and these are some of the top women entrepreneurs in india now most of the names you are familiar i just and all these ladies have started with necessity maybe uh, to uh, to familiarize you all will be uh, very familiar falguni nayak she is a beauty product she does she run just one app if you see when we see ad uh, maybe most of them will be seeing one day there's be a lack me ad the lemme bale ad and different kinds of brands are there but when you go to your nearby stores it is not available it's not a peer pressure but as being a woman who wants to be beautiful who wants to be healthy and not the, so she understood there was a necessity among the women so it's not just in her locality national wise she brought a platform she brought it she was running loss now now today she is one of the unicorns of india similarly everyone over here she is if she, if she is from beauty products there are women from who's from fintech who's from healthcare who's from e-commerce even logistic so all these people identified some pain point and they started it started their group and so now when can you start your business that is it you have idea in your mind so should i wait till i get married should i wait till i get my doctor degree nothing if you see the statistics all these women who are successful now they started by the age of 20 so you are in the prime time if you feel you can start you have an idea that is where these iics come into the scene iics are there to nurture your idea if that idea is they'll say okay this idea is good you give a little bit tweak over there they'll connect you they'll help you in getting mentors they'll help you in you know participate in hackathons it's okay you lose but i'll tell you because we have been working out with so many hackathons we have been working with so many accelerator programs even the losers are being recognized because in certain places winners right just because of mere points just one one or two points the loser and the winner is being declared but the losers are always if your product is good you are always kept in mind we know many of the starters we know many of the student startups who the juries are still remembering and following though they didn't win the uh, hackathons so never ever look down just because you didn't win your game you are never a loser over there if your product is good enough if you are fair and you feel that it is a necessity please 
don't hesitate through your iic start building up your company now education level definitely you don't need a degree uh, doctorate degree for that in india most of the ladies are in the ca uh, category of post graduation but definitely graduate so graduate help you to be more confident that's it but again this is not going to stop you even in the 10th standard if you felt your uh, mate you have a sister or your siblings or anyone who's in the 10th standard they feel their product is good enough encourage them nowadays education entrepreneurship is started in the school level itself so never ever stop your dream of entrepreneurship at any age or any degree now factors these are some of the factors what provoke a woman to uh, set up a startup so there are three basically motivational environmental and social motivational is monetary benefit okay you want to feel okay if i da i can build up a multinational company or building a profitable company then support from a family sir your family is at this bed because many of the women nowadays they start and start up saying that i don't want to be under anyone i want to be with the boss of myself then they want their contribution to this this is motivation environmentalist your skills your uh, experiences that you build along the side then the social media influence you felt somebody doing good you said okay why in somewhere in north and you would have felt okay why don't i start in my own locality then there are schemes that government is supporting you okay you fortunately unfortunately you, got, you were into one scheme so that is how the hackathons happen for example in our college also some of the winners they started just with an idea but when they won the hackathon they have taken it very seriously they have incorporated the company now they are speaking you know investment terms so that is it. that is what the government assistance me then the social factors the uh, in societal reasons for that pushes you then what are the challenges definitely the unawareness uh, of many initiatives you started something but you went on when you were struggling with it the research mobilization identifying the right team the right skill you knew you wanted to start a company but it's okay you don't need to know all the skills of running a company you have to hire cfos you have to hire ceos you have to hire cmos it's okay you run the idea is yours but running will be some the acceptance of you know taking in everyone together as a leader is what so many of them as a founder they lose because of that then supply this all these are resource mobilization then social challenges are you know the expectation when a woman start in your family so much of expectation okay when you go at your home and say okay i want to be a startup the whole family your whole community said oh she is going to bring in money within two years being in life science maybe being in it field two years is fair enough for you to start having a revenue but in the life science yes it is very tough i do accept it but the growth curve will be very steady you will only have a scalable growth when it comes to a life science company so these are all the social challenges that you need to face while you set up your own company now as i said unawareness there are so many funding schemes out there let it be so these are some of the msme uh, funding schemes uh, almost nine are there they are still active so these are like uh, um, most of them are in the loan kind of and uh, some of them are like if you are illiterate or some of them are like uh, for instance uh, uh, annapurna scheme if especially you want to do something like chef or something related to cooking it as the name suggests itself is so there are different kinds of which you should always look into so you can start your family can start your mom can start so there is nothing stopping government supports are there only thing you should you know go scout a little more about all these schemes now uh, these are some of the lessons learned because i work with so many women entrepreneurs there so these are some of the few beautiful points which always i carry with me one is be true to yourself and perform to your strength so don't if you don't have is again acceptance if you don't know something accept it be true to accept the local when an investor ask you yeah, how are you going to do it accept it okay i don't know but i will improve so always accepting what your strengths and weaknesses is always have helped as a woman because woman is always looked with a uh, focus lamp so at that focus lamp if you try to you know manipulate a bit you will be caught easily second thing is know that entrepreneurs not supposed to do do it all yeah so 
it's like what happens when you become a startup right and the women always tend to you know she becomes the logistic person she becomes the marketing person she becomes the technical person she gets to wear out fast so don't do that you will have a certain start building your team accept yourself you you need a team you are not supposed to run everything by us that acceptance is there be prepared to fight out there as i said saying yes and no if you feel what you did is right have the confidence to go and say never ever be a people pleasing person if you feel the people around is no uh, around is yes and what you did is no i will stick on to that so always be prepared for that accept a woman's choice without judging her so when it comes to the fourth point if you see right generally woman itself an enemy for woman when a woman pilot is there in the flight right a first a panic goes so woman is riding i um, mean uh, flying the flight if uh, maybe uh, when a woman is driving an auto a woman is driving a cab when woman led right a woman herself will start judging can she be so it's it's from within from each one of us to accept every woman counterpart of you so these are some of the lessons learned by women and the many more are there but for you always keep these things and definitely you will find confidence as you go on now coming to why investing in women has billion returns so why do you need a woman so if suppose you are having a startup may, maybe a um, uh, the male candidates participants are running why why do you need to take in women uh, founders or women team members one is high emotional intelligence women leaders are uh, are considered to be one of the powerful leaders because they don't run with iq they go with emotion they they run they 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 are more for the team building over there they identify the problem within the team and they go for rectifying it so that is what women are very emotionally intelligent and the the sustainability of the company they are very focused on that then women entrepreneurs bring in better retention rate as i said women have a long term so if if they are investing or if they are marketing they don't see for easy money so the customers they know they see a broader a broader sense of market so they acquire uh, they acquire the customers according so there's more of retention rate if you see so women lately it is considered women to be a very good marketers then dynamic and adaptability woman because she wants to change because she listens to everyone she is always dynamic to change according to the needs and fancies of at that time how in the company money is not the motivating factor this i've said in the first week women are never money driven hers is emotionally driven she sees her teams is intact she sees that that her company is in place she is very focused so money if there is some where she has to compromise her team and money definitely she will stand with the team so this is what a woman sees in when she comes as a woman starter so before i <clears throat> conclude i love the statement there is no force more powerful than a woman determined to rise so always if you are determined to do something in your life don't look back there is always a force and there is always an energy behind you to push that so thank you everyone thank you for your patience and being with me through that uh if anyone wants to ask me anything i'm open for you yes you can ask me <laughs> good morning ma'am ma'am i would like to know if uh, there is any scheme for women under state government uh i'm i truly accept my failure because i'm not much familiar what is happening in uh, kerala but uh, kerala through kerala startup missions there are many ventures there are many initiatives that is happening uh, that has been done for women entrepreneurs so maybe you have to be in touch with kerala startup mission
but uh, in central government yes there are various schemes under dst dbt where you can apply as an entrepreneur as a woman entrepreneur that is there and in tamil nadu yes there are uh, uh, in tamil nadu i'll not say it is more focused to women but there is no difference for a woman entrepreneur or male entrepreneur ओके मैम एनी डाउट स्टूडेंट्स कैन इंटरेक्ट विद आवर गेस्ट Anyone? Anyone want to interact with Madam? Please speak to that. PG students. Some girl has asked any uh, schemes are available under state government is concerned. Like what Madam told us, correct? Kerala Startup Mission we have. It depends upon state actually. Yes, Madam. It depends on state, right, Madam? Ah uh, yes, sir. But every state has their own schemes. But when it compared to all other states, Kerala Startup Mission is very vibrant. Yes, yes, ma'am. They they do run many uh, even for the ideation stages also they do run hackathons. And very lately, what I came to know, Kerala State is uh, Startup Mission with the colleges. They are doing initiatives for the women entrepreneurs. So okay. Kerala Startup Mission should be the first uh, uh, reach out for you to know more about all these schemes. Yes, madam. Recently, also we have seen in newspaper that Kerala uh, a startup mission uh, is uh, it's number one among all other states in uh, the country. It seems. I think recently they have featured it in newspaper for one or two weeks. Maybe. Yes, yes. And they are even in startup of... India portal also. Even in startup India portal also, if you go and see startup uh, Kerala uh, startup mission is uh, standing first. So after Gujarat, after two three, so there are two three people who takes the first five positions. So. It's a proud moment for me also to say Kerala is standing first. Okay, since Madam is also from Kerala, you are also happy, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, any students, if you want to interact, please interact with Madam. They are all like to interact, but they hesitate uh, to interact. That's the main problem. So that means uh, my talk was boring. I could say. No, 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 no. Never, never, Madam. <laughs> It's not yeah, like that. At least I expect at least ten or fifteen of them to build up their confidence and come. It's okay. nobody is going to laugh at you because we all have uh, some sort of doubts inside which always keeps running i do work with very uh, closely with uh, women and uh, college students so i can understand the your kind of inhibition so don't worry so i promise your teachers are also not going to scold you for asking any lame questions adila uh, she is having some doubt it seems she was uh, adila pm from adila is here Adila info analysis Hello Madam I think she has messaged me about uh, a startup if you have any uh, uh, small startup so how uh, to make it as a prototype how long i mean what may be the cost or something like that whether it depends upon the product or uh, how it madam if we, if we have any innovation something like that to make it as a prototype or make it as a final product what may be the uh, cost any uh, funding will be there something like that there are uh, 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 funding wise yes i feel it is iic is what they do these hackathons and there is no direct fund where you apply and you get it immediately but these hackathons and these programs what iic do maybe in line within kerala outside kerala she should participate but now asking about the funding it's always to better to keep it minimal but again depends upon the idea if it's uh, life science purely life science dependent i know it is going to be a bit costly <clears throat> 
if there is a um, culturing over there there is a, you know a prototype development which has uh, microbial analysis over there it is a or medical studies also if you want to do the uh, toxicology studies all these will have its own no if it is an iot driven you just need to make an app if you say there may be a nil investment over there so it all depends upon the kind of product but always i say that whatever it is your prototype try to make it within the investment cap of 50000 if you can do build up something with that yeah definitely there are prototype which goes beyond that till 1 lakh till 5 lakhs there are prototype because for in our case one of our student was making a tractor so that is his prototype so he had to invest till 5 lakhs so his family has supported it but again so it all depends upon the idea but for a minimal of minimal i'm saying 50000 will be fair enough to start with if you can complete your prototype or your proof, proof of concept but again it's all based on the idea i i cannot say the life science is different iit is different iot is different engineering is different mechanical is different so which concept the student is taking is also there thank you ma'am since you are having a better idea in this field you are the right person to uh, inform us about this uh, innovation as well as amount is concerned uh, sure. then uh, anyone uh, you just will give two or three minutes time if anyone want to ask question you can just ask madam or else we shall wind up the session thank you little if anyone is malayalathil nu chodikkam not an inhibition english thane chodi മലയാളത്തിൽ ചോദിച്ചോളൂ കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല ഞാൻ പറയാം thank you madam let me invite our vice principal for what the thanks thank you madam thank you so much uh, for your wonderful uh, lecture it was really inspiring uh, to our students and to our faculty also so thank you once again for uh, accepting your invitation to be a part of our uh, impact lecture session thank you once again i thank uh our principal uh, dr sujitha prasad for giving all the support okay. i thank uh, dr kadar vel who has been uh, actively participating in organizing such events and his team ms serena uh, ms ravi hari i thank the it department and all and last but not least all the students and all the uh, delegates who are attending this event thank you so much next lecture will be on 2:30 thank you i want to once again thank dr nishan good ma'am for uh, being with us thank you ma'am thank you thank, thank you madam you, uh, madam you, uh, after the session you. also if you are free please uh, do join us madam at uh, 2:30 will be our session sure sure okay. sure sir So to that is a session, madam, about um, uh, Yogesh sir is giving a, a talk on uh, how uh, innovation from uh, a plastic to bamboo. Uh, so if possible, you please uh, do join us, madam. Sure, sir. And uh, I'll join. I lost the audio. I am not able to hear. Thank you, ma'am.